Hello and welcome to Scene Optimizer by Procedural Worlds. This powerful tool contains a wide array of features to help boost performance in your Unity game projects. The Scene Optimizer can merge meshes, reduce the amount of data being sent to the GPU, and generally help improve performance across the board. You can find more information about this tool by navigating to Procedural Worlds, Scene Optimizer, and opening the PDF file located inside the documentation folder. You should always profile your results against your target hardware. Different hardware will be better at performing certain things than others. So profiling your performance between two devices may give drastically different results. With that in mind, let's get started. In this video, we will be utilizing Sinti's Polygon Fantasy Kingdom pack and the demo scene that comes with it. If we hit play, we'll notice that the scene is doing quite a lot of work to display this environment. There are a variety of methods that we can use to enhance this scene to increase performance. For example, we might combine all the meshes that utilize the same material so that Unity doesn't have to make as many draw calls. We could split those meshes into segments to limit the number of combined items we see in our environment and we could also add LOD groups to those things so that they don't appear if the camera is too far away. This is where the scene optimizer comes in. This tool can quickly analyze your scene and then automatically optimize it for performance. Let's look at how we can optimize this scene by using the scene optimizer. Once you've installed the scene optimizer in your project, you'll find the scene optimizer window under window Procedural Worlds, Scene Optimizer, and opening the main window option. The Scene Optimizer window contains a wide range of settings you can configure to optimize your scene. The first panel we're presented with is the Scene Optimization panel. To start using this tool, we need a root game object that contains all our game objects and meshes that we wish to optimize. To do this, I'm going to set up a new empty game object called original and move all of the objects I want to optimize into it. Things like the directional light and main camera are not needed in the optimization. Therefore, I'm going to bring it out of the root game object. Now that we have our original game objects, I'm going to add the root into the scene optimizer here. It's also worth noting that this is where the optimized meshes and objects will be parented to once the process is over. We need to set up what happens when we optimize these meshes. This is called an optimize command. By default, the scene optimizer has four commands. Small objects, medium objects, large objects, and extra large objects. Let's start by selecting our small objects we can see that there are a lot of settings that we can change. You can find more information about these settings in the documentation file. The first option I want to select is the debug performance option. This option will create a separate game object that contains all of our newly optimized meshes. It will also provide runtime tools that allow us to test for performance improvements in our scene. Now let's click Optimize Scene and wait for the process to finish. After it has finished optimizing our scene, you'll notice that the Scene Optimizer has generated a new game object in our scene called the FPS Tester. This object contains all the optimized game objects as well as a UI for displaying the performance at runtime. Let's hit play and see the performance improvements. At first glance, we can already see that our game's performance is being heavily affected by rendering our original game objects. If we click Optimize, we'll switch over to our optimized game objects and we can see significant improvements to our frames. This improvement will vary as we move our camera around the scene, but there are many ways we can improve our performance overall. Let's first look at how this performance improvement is possible. If we go to our scene, we can see that the original or unoptimized game objects contains a ton of individual objects. While Unity does perform optimizations during runtime, this still causes a huge overhead in several factors of our game. Unity would need to generate a lot more shadow maps and draw calls 
all while trying to batch all the objects in attempts to reduce the number of frames needed to render the scene. However, if we look at the optimized game objects, we can see that it contains a bunch of combined meshes that are optimized to reduce all of these extra operations that Unity would need to perform. Therefore, the scene optimizer ultimately frees up Unity from having to do more work and thus providing us with more frames. There are many more things that we can do in order to improve the performance of our scene overall. The first is by using static batching. Static batching enhances performance by reducing the number of render state changes between draw calls. The objects you choose to be static are the ones that don't move at all in your scene. Fortunately for us in this example, all of the objects in the scene are considered static. So I can just mark all of them as static, including all the children. To demonstrate the impact this has on performance, let's enter play mode. Then we'll open our frame debugger by going to window, Analysis, Frame Debugger. If we hit Enable on the Frame Debugger, we'll notice that Unity is rendering a heap of different game objects with separate materials. However, if we switch over to our optimized game objects and turn on our Frame Debugger again, we can see that we are rendering far less objects, Unity is doing far less optimization work, and thus we have more frames as a result. The next optimization technique we can perform is by using the occlusion culling system. You can find this under Window, Rendering, and selecting the occlusion culling option. This works by reducing the number of objects rendered in our scene if they aren't viewed within our camera frustum. Let's start by disabling the original game objects so that they don't get included in the culling system bake process. And then we're going to perform the occlusion culling bake on our optimized game objects. Once this is done, we can see this in action by hitting the play button and opening the scene view. As we can see with the occlusion window open, you can rotate the camera and see what gets culled by Unity. Let's then look at the overall impact this technique has on the performance of our project. Here we have a scenario with the occlusion culling system turned off and our camera faced at a wall with most of the objects hidden behind the wall. If we hit play, we can see that our original objects are getting roughly the same number of frames we had originally. If we hit optimize, we're still getting the benefits of the scene optimizer's performance improvements. Here we have a scenario with the occlusion culling system turned on. If we hit play, we can now see that our original objects are getting a significant improvement to our frames overall, because Unity is now rendering far fewer objects than it originally did. However, if we optimize our scene again, we can see that we're getting a drastic performance improvement. This is because we're utilizing the optimizations from the scene optimizer, as well as Unity's occlusion culling system. That's a huge boost in performance overall. Another technique we can use to improve performance in our project is by using layer distance culling. This technique allows us to control the culling of our objects based on how far they are from the camera. We're going to start by adding a few more layers to our Unity project. To do this, we're going to go to Layers and select Edit Layers. Starting on layer six, we're going to create PW object small PW object medium, and PW object large. Once we have our layers added to our project, go back to the scene optimizer window, select the first optimize command and enable the add layer culling option. This option allows us to set up our object distance and shadow distance to cull our objects. We also wanna set up the layer that we want to apply this optimize command to. This would be the PW object small in this case. If we move our camera around in the scene view, we will be able to see the visualizer for the object distance cutoff, which is in yellow. If we modify the object distance value, we will be able to see how far the objects will be culled from the camera. We will also see the visualizer for the shadow distance, which is in blue. Next, we're going to set the medium objects to have the PW 
Object Medium Layer and select the Add Layer Culling option again. The Scene Optimizer comes with some default culling values for each of the optimized commands, but you can modify them however you see fit in your project. Lastly, we're going to select the large objects and set that to the PW Object Large Layer and select the Layer Culling option again for that as well. Any other objects outside this criteria will be our extra large objects and they won't need to be culled by distance. Once you have finished setting up your optimized commands, you can now re-optimize your scene and wait for the process to finish. Once the scene has been optimized, you'll notice that the scene optimizer has added a culling system script to your main camera. This has set up all our object and shadow distances based on what we have set up in our optimized commands. To see a preview of this configuration in action, open the game view and change the culling system settings on the camera. If we hit play, we'll notice a more consistent improvement in our frames when you move the camera around the scene. In summary, we've gone from an unoptimized scene that Unity struggled to render to an optimized scene that utilizes various rendering performance techniques such as static batching, occlusion culling, and layer distance culling to achieve a wild surge of performance with our project. This was also achieved in mere minutes thanks to the scene optimizer. If you wish to learn more, head on over to Canopy where you can find more information about this product or you can browse and post in the forums. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for watching.